فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The author, rahimahullah, he started his speech with, I'm not going to correct the book. If I see mistakes in the, in the matter, my job is not to do tahqiq. Inshallah, we're going to go to the next book, and we're going to correct what's in the mistakes that are in this book. Okay? For now, we're not in a position to correct what's right or wrong. There are some mistakes in there, but we're not going to talk about it. If anybody wants to ask me, we can speak about it later. Or should I just mention the mistake and then we move on and we talk about why and the mistake is? Should we do that or not? Huh? Huh? Shall we do that? Should we do that? Yeah? What do you think? Okay, the first mistake is that he says Al Kalam. So underline the word Kalam and remember that. So a mistake is, a mistake is going to come from this later. He says Kalam. Okay, underline it and I'll tell you why later. Al Kalam which is speech. According to the Arabs, a speech is something that four things is present. So remember, remember this. A speech to the Grim Arabs, Arabs, I mean, according to the grammarians more like. A speech to the grammarians is something that four things are found in it. According to the grammarians, a speech is something that four things are what? Four things are found in it. Number one, it has to be lafzan. It has to be what? It has, to, it has to be what? It has to be lafzan. Are you with me? What does the word lafzan mean? Okay. Lafzan linguistically means at-tarhu wa ramyu Sah? The word lafzan originally means the word laf, that word. So I'm, I'm, I'm explaining, I'm, I'm explaining what the word laf means. What's the definition of laf linguistically? In the Arabic language, what you, when you throw something, is called what? That throwing that you're doing is called what? Laf. Are you with me? Laf adha Muhammadun in nawata. Muhammad threw the seed. Are you with me? Ila talaha wa Are you with me? Brothers, are you with me? So linguistically, the word laf means throwing something. Okay. According to the grammarians, and that's what matters to us now, when the author used the word lafzi here, what does he mean? Are you with me, brothers? Yeah, it means a sawt. Al-mushtamilu ala ba'd al-huruf al-hijaiyyah. It means sound. In that sound of yours, it's not just, uh, is that sound? That's a sound. But the sound consists of the alphabets of the Arabic language from Alif to Ya. So it's not just a... That's a sound now. But does it consist of letters? Huh? No. Are you with me, brothers? So two things is what the grammarians see as a laugh. The first thing is it has to be salt. And the second thing it has, it has to be is it consists of the alphabets. So now, is Khalid a lafd? Yeah? Is Khalid a lafd? Why? Because it meets the two conditions that we've said, right? Sound, I read it. Are you with me? Second thing is what? It's got all the, it's got three letters of the language in there. Kh, lam. Del. Now, the, the, pay attention to this. The grammarians would never have known how to pronounce everything, anything if the Qur'an were to bring it through to us. Are you with me? Are you there, brothers? Who are the ones who taught us how to pronounce these letters? <laughs> Look how everyone helps each other. That we, there's that relationship between everyone. Are you with me, brothers? The, the language has not passed on to us how to speak, how to say things. That was taken through what? Are you with me? Brothers. And I'm not good at Tidrid, so I'm not going to enter that. 
I'm not going to entertain that idea. Okay? Anyone who goes into a field that's not his, Atabil Ajayib, he'll come out with his fascination, amazement. So let's go back to grammar. The second condition is Murakab. The second condition is what? Murakab. Murakab means compounded, it's a compound. And in Arabic, it means ما تركب من شيئين فأكثر. It is anything that consists of two or more. Are you with me? So the first condition for something to be a kalab, what is it? It has to be a lafz. We know what lafz means. It also has to be what? Murakab. What did I say? Murakab means according to the. What does murakab mean according to the grammarians? Anything that consists of more than two. two. So is Khalid now a kalab? What about if I say Fahima Khalidun? Is that kalam now? Yes. Fahima Khalidun. Khalid understood. That's a kalam. Yes, it is. Why is that a kalam? It meets the two conditions you just said. Which is, first of all, it is love. The second one is what? It's murakab. Because I said Fahima Khalid. Fahima Khalidun. Khalid what? Khalid understood. Khalid? Understood. So I mentioned two things which makes it a speech. Number two, number three, that the author mentioned is Al Mufid. Mufid means ma fa ma afada faida. Alaykum salam. Yuhsil al sukutu alayha min al mutakallim wa sabah. Pay attention to this. Are you with me, brothers? The third is al-mufid. Mufid means what? The person who is speaking is benefiting the one who is speaking to. Now, what does it mean that he's benefit? If I say, for example, as-sama'u fawqala, the sama is above us, is that benefit? Yeah. Yeah, brothers. Is that a benefit? Is there anyone who doesn't know that the sama is above us? The benefit that they're talking about is not whether you knew the information or not. It means that if it benefits you in the sense where it is a statement that is capable of benefiting anyone. Because right now, are you there? There could be a situation where that sentence may benefit somebody. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it benefits you at that particular moment is as long as it's capable of benefiting. That's what they mean. Are you there? Very good. Two people are sitting. Somebody says, two people are sitting. And a third, uh, two people are talking, chatting. A third person comes in and says, Oh, Salaam Alaikum. Akhir is your brother. I haven't seen him lately. 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 And he goes, Mahamud al which is his brother. He says, my brother Muhammad is traveling, he's traveled. Is it Mufid what he said? But his younger brother who he was talking to, does he not know that? Does that make sense? Huh? So it, was, it is Mufid, it's beneficial. Even that though his brother knows, he knows that. You're not going to say, well, since there's one person who knows already, and another person does, it's not Mufid, it's not beneficial. Does that make sense? <coughs> no, it can benefit somebody, it doesn't matter if it's not everyone. Very good. The third, the third, is this the fourth one? The fourth one is, <coughs> is al wadah The word wadah in the language, it means al isqat al isqat to drop something. The word wadah it comes, it means Lughatan al isqat to drop something. For example, you say, وَضَعْتُ الدَّيْنَ عَنْ fulan. I dropped, I asqattuhu minhu. I dropped the debt from so and so. I took it from basically. Are you with me? وَضَعْ Okay? But what does it mean here? What do they mean here? What it means here is, جَعْلُ اللَّفْضِ دَلِيلًا عَلَى بَعْلًا it's to to use a wording in which you're using it as an evidence 
What do they mean by that? What they're trying to say is that if a person is sleeping and he talks, is it speech? The guy says to his uh, wife while he's sleeping, while he's sleeping, I hate you. And he carries on, oh, I love you, he says. No, no, I, 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 I hate you, I like that one. So he says, I hate you. Will she hold him account for that speech? Yeah, she probably will, yeah. <laughs> I should say, you thought your mind, uh, you were thinking your mind. <laughs> but is it speech? Yeah. Are you with me, brothers? Is that speech? Yeah. It's called lovely. Are you with me, brothers? It's not a speech. So what he says is that you place this as an evidence for something. He's not using this as an evidence. His words are not an evidence. He's not using it as an evidence. He doesn't even know what he's saying. Oh, the majnoon. If the majnoon talks, is his words cannot? No. Even if it's clear and it's eloquent and everything's structured well, people are not going to take it serious, are they? Yeah. They won't. And also, another thing falls under that is that if it's not as in accordance to the Arabic grammar. So for them, if it's this, then what you're saying, <laughs> because all of those definitions, it doesn't bring the Arabic language in, does it? It doesn't. English is, it can be what? Laf, Buraka, Mufid. Are you with me? For them, it has to be Wada. Ay Wada'ahu al-Arab. The Arabs place this. So it has to be Arabic. Are you with me, brothers? With those four, what does it what does it become? Huh? What does it become? And um, benefit now. Question now, just a side benefit. Do we all know the four points I mentioned? Yes or no, brothers? Yeah. The first day we always take it very lightly. Tomorrow's gonna be heavy, okay brothers? The day after that. So today just it's a warm up. Warm up. I was going to ask you a question. Qum, stand up. Is that a kalam? Yes, yeah? Yes. You don't think it's a kalam? Hey, who thinks, put your hand up, if you believe Qum, according to the principles that we took, according to the re rules and regulations that we took, is Qum kalam? Those brothers, they said it's kalam. Don't, don't be, don't be hamma jurra'a atba'i kulli la'iq. Don't just follow the group. Look at everybody and say, oh, some of the Hufar said they put their hands up. Some of the brothers who are studious, they put their hands up, so I'm going to go with them. Second people group who believe, no, it's not. Ah, you told me principles, I can't see my rules. Good, like that. What about the Mudabi Dabi 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 it's some confused or come, yeah. Eunice, which one were you? Uh, confused or come? <laughs> Your first group. <laughs> ah, it's confused. Ah, so you got confused quickly. That's what happens. When you really think, <laughs> you're confused. Uh, um, so those who've said, I want to I wanna see those who said, no, it's not a speech. Why, do, why don't you believe it's a speech, not a speech? It's not Murakam number one. What do you mean? But it's, so generally, if it's not Murakam, is it going to be Mufid? No, it's not going to be Mufid. So generally, if it's not Murakam, it's not Mufid. Can it be? If it's not Murakam, it's not going to be Mufid. Are you with me? Wallahi ka ibn Malik, rahimahullah, didn't use the word Mufid. Did he use the word Mufid? Kalamu la lafzul Mufid. He used the word Murakam. Yeah? كلام لا لفظ مفيد كاستقب واسم وفعل ثم حرف للكلم واحده كلمة والقول عم وكلمة بها كلام قد يعم. so what did Ibn Malik does it say what? Ibn Malik doesn't use مركب. suffices himself without it. good I like that. you brothers are consistent. in Arabic it might be one word but in English it's two so how do you reconcile? we're gonna come to come to the juicy part now. I like. I like the idea of those who say it's not, because you guys are going according to what we learned. Those other brothers are not basing on that. They're basing on pre pre classes they took. So for me, you guys are right. 
right now, I'll be honest. Because you took principles, I can't find my principles. But these brothers, are basing on other lessons they've taken on, you know? They study in other institutes or somewhere. Ah. Ah. Um, so just remarking, I think you can base on the first one. <coughs> What's the first one again? Is uh, so <coughs> that it is? Um, it is. It is, hey? Um, first, uh, last one, it is basically um, a letter, it's a sound in a letter. Okay. Like, uh, second one, uh, Morocco, it, in English it's compounded, so in Arabic, to stand up, there's possibly one word. Like, um, so the third one, the, the person speaking has a benefit. So, so I like, understand over the issue that it could be compounded. What do you mean it could be compounded? Um, so it, in English, uh, it's two words. In English. Well, can't it can't be two in Arabic. And I'm saying, I don't know if it's two, but I'm, I'm assuming it's two. Mm. Um, the food, the person speaking does benefit. So if you tell him to stand up, he does benefit in case he's sitting on something. Okay. Uh, the fourth one, what that, uh, to drop something, it's, it's uh, also in Arabic. So, uh, so from the four, that four conditions, it could be. So you're saying basically my condition somehow met. Yeah. Are you, are you, who can sit with those, the group who said? That it's Mufid. So who, sorry, who said it is a <coughs> kalam? Hey, what's your argument? Who's going to speak on behalf of that group? Who's the spokesman of that group? Can't let the group down. Hey, Abdullahi. Uh, Abdullahi said there's something hidden here. There's a hidden word that we can't see, our eyes can't see. Hey, Abdullahi, what is it? And it's hidden from us. It's Qum, stand, but what it really is, is you stand. So that word Qum and Ta is there. It's because it's written on the paper, but you can't see it. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a, just, I don't know, let's take it like that. So every Fi'l Abar, the Fa'il is what? And we're going to talk about that later. The one who's been spoken to, the one that's been addressed, the subject, is hidden. So, so now, that one has what? Fa'il Amar is the verb, verb uh, what's it called? Command verb, right? The command, command verb is one word, but really it's the hidden, the subject is always hidden. So now that we found it's two words, does it fulfill the conditions? Does it fulfill the conditions now? It does. That's just a little benefit. Hey, Fadal. Now the author says, he goes into the types of speech. The mistake with the author here is, remember I told you kalam was a mistake. They use the word kalam. Brothers, sisters, did I not tell you to underline the word kalam? Now is the time to explain to you. This wow, he says, everyone, if, you, if you've got the book, look what he says. Wa'aqsamuhu. The who, the ha, where does it go back to? It goes back to Kalam. That pronoun, who, him, is going back to Kalam. And it's times, it's times. Who's the it going back to? Kalam. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So, what, who, it's types. So, he's saying that the types of Kalam, and that's incorrect. So, brothers, these types that he's going to mention are not the types of kalam. Why? What's the reason? Next book. That's why Ibn Malik didn't do that. That's why Ibn Malik says, Kalam, kalam, la lafzun mufidun kastakin, wa smun wa fi'lun thumma harfun ilk, wa ahiduhu kalimatun, wa alqawlu am, wa kilmatun biha, kalamun qad yu'am, bil jarri wa tanwini wa nida wa al, wa musnadun lil ismi tamizun hasan. Ibn Malik, rahimahullah, he used the word kalimah. And قول and the kalam and explains what each one's difference is. Are you with me? We're not going to now go in. But you just need to know that there's something here that's not right. But do you just memorize it the way it is? Yes. Do you just learn it for how it is right now? Yes. Do you blind follow him right now? Yes. Until we go to the next book. And that's how sciences are taught. You don't learn what's right or wrong in the first book. Okay. You just take it from how it is right now, you go to the next book. Then you're told, remember what you studied there? Well, this some things are wrong. Start editing it. Get rid of this. Don't do this. This was a mistake. The next book comes, 
the last two, there's these mistakes in it, sah? So you'll consistently be told, drop this, drop this, get rid of this, yeah? There was a father who took his child, rahimahullah, his name was called Abu Waqt. He said, my father, when I was young, at the age of seven, six, eight brothers, what he would do to his son is, Allah, brothers, look at seeking knowledge. He would give his son rocks and pebble uh, stones, stones. And he would pass those two stones and he would say, hold the stones, hold them. And he would do it. Hold the other one and he'll hold it. And he'll say, okay. He'll take a rope and he'll tie on his leg and on the leg of his child. Imagine a seven-year-old and, a, and, a, and a, a father. Can they take the same steps? And he would say, let's walk together. We're going to now seek knowledge together. And they walk the earth, man. And whenever I got tired and I started dragging, can, can you take the same step as your dad at the age of six, seven? No, he said, I couldn't rely. And he said, when I get tired, he says, drop one rock. So he drops one of the rocks. And he says, drop the other rock. He drops it. After a while, when I get very tired, I can't walk anymore. He would take me out of time. He would... He would untie me from his leg and then he would tell me to walk for a bit. When I then become tired, when I'm still sure that I'm tired, he then takes me and puts me on his neck. And that's how I saw knowledge at the end, at the very And his name became Abul Waqt. Time, precision in time, accuracy in time, benefiting from time. So, brothers, what, what do they call that now? Child abuse. So, that's what they call it now. Social workers will knock on your door straight away. Yeah, do 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 do. Yeah, why is that? What do you want from me? Yeah, what do you do to your kid? Yeah, mushkila. But to let your child watch music and and uh, yeah, to let your child watch. Billahi alaykum brothers. I ask you guys a question. Not that I'm saying it's, but just to show you that akan brain. By itself, in Allah, لا يستقل العقل دون هداية بالوحي تأصيلا ولا تفصيلا كالطرف دون النور ليس بمدرك حتى يراه بكرة وصيلا فإذا النبوة لم يلك ضياؤها The person has to realize that the brain by itself won't work. This game that you play, what's the, what's the game again? That fight again? Call of Duty. Call of Duty. How old do you have to be to play that game? 18 plus. How old do you have to be to listen to rappers and singers? I'm just saying, are you with me? Are you with me? Does YouTube allow you to watch? You have to have an age restriction to watch rappers and all these haram lyrics and, and the videos, huh? Look at Akal. Not that I'm saying Call of Duty is khair and it's obedience. No, I'm not saying that. Just trying to show you what they said. Their old things that they said. You don't realize why. Are you with me? That's when your brain alone is the one that, the, that runs affairs. Ajeeb. Anyways, the author here says the types of speeches is three. The first one is ismun, wa fi'alun, wa harfun ja'al ma'alam. He said the first one is a noun, ism. Brothers, I really, this is the foundation. Today's class is the foundation. I'm going to be building on that foundation. Brothers, sisters and brothers, please, please, please try to understand today's class so much. Because tomorrow, I'm just going to say to you, remember we said that? This one falls under this one. Remember we said here something? This falls under here. Remember we said this? This one falls under there. It's just, we're trying to put everything under, under headings. But we're laying the foundation today. We are laying the foundation today. With that strong foundation in place, we're going to build the whole building properly. Are you with me, brothers? Okay. How many types of speeches are there according to the Arabs? The author said it, how many? Ismun, Fi'il, Harf. Ism is what? Noun. Harf is what? Huh? And Fi'il is what? So Ism is a noun, Fi'il is a what? Verb. Verb. And Harf is what? 
particle. Now I've translated it for you. Next time I'm not even going to use those words anymore. I'm not going to use particle, I'm not going to use noun, I'm not going to use verb. I just want to use those words now. So get to know now. Yassim means now. You will remember that. As we go along, once I've told you what a word means, when we move on, I'm not going to tell you what it means anymore. We're just now going to start using the Arabic term. I don't want you guys to take us back again and say, what does that word mean again? You ain't done your homework. So isim means noun. Fi'lun it means verb. Harful means particle. Okay. The author said wa harful particle. Ja'a li That comes with what? It comes with what? It comes with a meaning. Why did he say that? The huruf are two types. Are you with me? How many types of huruf are there? How many types of particles are there? There's huruf which are known as huruf al ba'ani and huruf al babani. Huruf al ba'ani and huruf al babani. Huruf al ba'ani means what? Particles that have meaning. Particles that have what? They've got meaning. That's what the author is talking about here. And we're going to see some of them. It is like fi, an, rubba, ba, you know, those letters. They have meanings? They do. Huruful ma'ali. There's huruful mabali. Huruful mabali are the alphabets. Alif, ba, ta, ta, ji, ma, ka, da. Do they have a meaning? Have no meaning. So what he say here to you, وَحُرُوفُ جَالِبَعْلًا He say to you, I'm not talking about the alphabets. Okay? Because the alphabets are also called huruf. He's talking about the one fi. You with me? عَن عَلَى Those are huruf. صح? These are called huruf al-ba'ali. Huruf al-ba'ali. Because they have meaning. Fi means in. Right? عَلَى means on. Huh? How about this? So that's what he means. So now let's go back to Ism. Ism, brothers and sisters, I'm speaking very slow and I'm trying to repeat myself many times. But tomorrow won't be like this. Reason is because today is Ta'sis. Ta'sis. Today is Ta'sis. We're placing the foundation. We're placing the foundation. Ism, brothers, is categorized into three. The ism is how many types? Three types. The first one is known as, I tell you the Arabic, and I, the, in brackets you can write the English. The first one is called, from the, it's called Mudhar. Mudhar. Are you with me? Brothers and sisters, the first type of ism is what? Mudhar. Mudhar means proper noun or apparent noun. So, apparent noun. The second one is Mudmar. Mudmar which is pronoun. Are you with me, brothers? That's why, look how weak, that's how, look how bad it is when you translate Arabic to English. That's how weak it is. Can you say that under noun falls pronouns in English? This doesn't sound right there. Because pronoun is an entity that stands alone, as, uh, and so does noun. Are you with me? So, noun isn't the right word for ism. Are you with me? Like, as you know, this is Bibab al We're trying to make things close to you, so you have an understanding. But see, as you learn, stop using translation. Start using the word as it is in Arabic. So now, ism is, ism is three types. The first one is mum. The first one was mudha, apparent or proper, whatever you want to call it. Apparent nouns. Okay, the second one is mudmar pronouns. 
The third one is Mubham. Mubham. The second, the third one is Mubham. The third, third time is Mubham. Okay, which is ambiguous noun. It's an ambiguous noun. It's a what? It's an ambiguous noun. So let's take the first. Let's take the what? Let's take the first type of noun, which is mudhar. Mudhar are all types of noun that you know already. You already know it, right? It's the it's, it's any, Muhammad is a noun. It falls under this type. Rajulun, a man. This is apparent. This is called the mudhar. The mudhar. Okay. The second one, which is a mudhar, pronouns, is the three types of pronoun that you guys already know. Sah brothers. Three types of pronouns in the Arabic language. Sah? Al Mutakalim, Al Mukhatab, Al Ghaib. <coughs> the pronouns are three. The reason I'm not mentioning it right now is coming to us. It's going to come. Don't worry. Don't worry. Three times, it will come. Each one detailed. The ambiguous are two types. Okay? Asma'i Shara and Asma'i which are Mosula. Hada, Hadi, Asma'i Shara. And الذي, الذي لا, الل, التي, التي, all of them are mubham. The reason why they're called ambiguous is هذا is not owned by a muayyan, it's not owned by a specific person. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? When you say هذا this, but everybody's going to say to you, okay, what? Because there's so much in front of you, what? It, it, no one owns the هذا. Are you with me? If I say this to you, brothers, you're all going to look, what? I have to say something that narrows it down to a person. So it's ambiguous, it's unclear, it is not for a specific person. Are you with me? And only two things are like that. Hada and Alladi and anything that stems from it. Okay? Anything that stems from it. Which is Ism Ishara and Asma' which are Mawsula. And they're gonna come to us. What's this an Asma' Ishara? Wara Asma' Mawsula. They're gonna come. Don't worry. We've now finished downs. Brothers, pay attention here. These three categorization of a noun is what's going to help us know later what Arab is and what's not Arab.